Hi, in this video, we are going to cover an important topic of how to create partitions. So we are going to learn how to create a new partition, how to install a file system, then making that partition persistent and finally deleting the partition. Now the question comes why we want to create partitions. So partitions may be required for better organization of the data. So you might want to save different kinds of data, different type of data into different partitions. Or you may want to use the partitions for multiple booting, multiple operating systems. So if you want to install multiple operating systems, you would prefer installing each operating system into each different partition because they can't exist in one single partition. Finally, you might want to create a separate swap space or extend the existing swap space. So whatever is the need, you will require a new partition. So let us first undergo the steps that are involved and then we will see how to practically implement those steps. So you can list the disks that are available for partition using the lsblk command. Then we will select one of the disks for partitioning. Then we will request a new partition by pressing the N key followed by pressing the P key which will select that you are going to create a primary partition. Then we will tell the partition number and the size of the partition that you want to create. So the disk might be of 10 GB but you want to get a partition of 5 GB or 2 GB. So that size you need to tell. Step number 5 is to specify the partition type. So for that the different type of partition available you can press the T key to list all the partitions but by default we will use the Linux partition. Once the partition is created we will save or we will update the partition table by pressing the W key and finally we will initiate or we will allow the kernel to reread the partition table without requiring the reboot by using the command part probe. So, by following these seven steps, you will be able to create the partition. Further comes how to install the file system, which is step number eight. So for that, we will use the mkfs command. Next, if you want to mount the file system, why mounting is required? Because if you want to use the file system, you will have to mount it to a existing directory. So for that, we will use the mount command. So we will create a directory and use the mount command and then whatever you want the content to be created within that new partition you will create that in this mount point or in this directory then to make this mount persistent which means that at each reboot the partition should be automatically mounted to this mount point we will have to make a few changes in the etcfs tab file and finally, we will check whether everything uh, is done without an error by using the mount minus a command. So these are all the steps that we are going to learn. Now let us see practically how to implement these steps. So if you remember from the last video, we added a couple of disks which were SDB and SDC in my case. So I'll use the disk SDC which is of 3 GB to create a new partition of size 1 GB. Okay, you can choose any disk, it doesn't matter. So we we'll use the F disk command and then give the path of the disk, which is DEV slash STC. So now you can see that the command prompt has changed because now we are using the F disk facility to create the partition. So you can see it says command M for help. So all those commands that you can use within this facility, you can have a look at that by pressing M and then enter. So these are all the commands that you can use. Since we want to create a new partition, we will use or we will press the key N. Okay, You can see here N is to add a new partition. Press enter. Now it asks you what is this partition type. Is it a primary partition or is it an extended partition? So by default, you can have four primary partitions or four partitions only. If you want to have more than four partitions, 
you need to create an extended partition and then within that you can create further partition so we are going to go with the option p which is the primary partition now since i told you there can be four partitions so it asks you what number you want to give okay so you can type one two three or four any number you can give if you want to go with the default okay so by default the first partition should get the number one so if you want to go with that you can simply press enter that will allocate it the number partition number one you can either type one or simply press enter both ways it will give the partition the number as one now the next is you choose the size okay so for that you need to tell which is the first sector now it's difficult for us to know which is the first available sector so it tells you here by default that this is the first available sector 2048 so simply press enter now last sector will define what is the size okay so again it will be difficult for us to tell the last sector number to calculate the size because we deal in sizes with mbs gbs tbs right so rather than giving it a sector we can simply write like so you can see here plus size so you need to write the size so you write plus and then give the size so i want this partition to be of size 1 gb okay so you can see created a new partition number is 1 of type linux and of size 1 gb all right so the partition is created but this is a temporary creation we need to press w and enter why we do this because all the changes that we have done so far are temporarily and they exist only in the memory they are not actually applied to the disk so once we press w it writes the updated partition table to the disk and it notifies the kernel about the changes that have been made finally we will write part probe etc sdc sorry stc1 oh, sorry 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 not etc we will write the path i have given wrong dev and stc right so why have used this part probe command because after modifying partitions or creating a new partition using the f disk the kernel might still be using the old partition table although we updated it but since the system is running it we have not rebooted it so running the part probe ensures that the kernel rereads the the updated partition table without requiring a reboot now if i again use lsplk you can see now that the sdc disk from that disk we have created a partition sdc1 whose size is 1 gb so this means now still 2 gb are left in the sdc disk if you want you can create another partition of 2 gb or 1 gb or whatever size you want and also see here type sdc is a disk whereas sdc1 is a partition so now the partition is created we can use a partition only if a file system is installed on that partition right so to install a file system we we'll use mkfs dot whatever file system we want to install so let's suppose we want xfs and then the path of the partition which is slash tev slash sdc1 so now the file system is installed to use this partition we have to mount it to a mount point mount it means that you need to link it to an existing directory and then by using that directory we can access this particular partition okay so i can't directly let's suppose write touch slash tev slash sdc1 and then create a file f1 inside it so it's not possible you can see it says not a directory so what i have to do is mkdir create a directory so let's suppose that is new partition 
now i need to mount the partition on this directory so the path of the directory would be slash root slash new partition okay so the command is mount what i want to mount slash tev slash stc1 where i want to mount slash root slash new partition okay now if i want to create a file what i will do is touch new partition slash whatever content i want f1 so this is a file that i have created then mkdir new partition d1 so i have created one file and one directory if i list new partition you can see okay now let us suppose if i unmount which is u mount what i want to unmount slash root slash new partition okay if i now do ls new partition you can see nothing is there why because the file f1 and the directory d1 were created on that particular partition which was attached to new partition directory since i have unmounted the partition so new partition is just a directory but the content was saved on the partition is now unlinked okay so if the partition is unlinked this means what this directory will not contain anything so if i want to view it again i need to reattach it considering it you consider that this partition is a pen drive so once you plug in the pen drive you can see the contents of the pen drive and that is the command mount so if i mount it again and i do ls but i'll not use the devsdc1 i'll use the mount point which is new partition it's available so once you unplug the pen drive from your system which is u mount and you try to view the content again nothing will be visible right so that's about how to mount and unmount the partition on a directory or a mount point the final thing is how to keep this mounting persistent so that you don't have to mount it each time you reboot the system so for that you need to edit a file etc slash etc slash fs tab this is very important and this step this step must be done in the exam also so here you can see certain entries are already there so these partitions are already been mounted so i'll delete this entry because this one extra entry that i created earlier so you will see something like this on your system there are six things that you there are six columns that you need to write so very first is the partition which is slash tev slash sdc1 so the path of the partition tab press tab okay don't press spaces press one tab then the mount point which was slash root slash new partition again tab here you will write the file system that we use so we used xfs again tab then these things are default so you will write defaults tab 0 tab 0 okay only the first three things you need to remember the partition path mount point the file system and then it will always be defaults 0 and 0 save it that's it you can check that the everything has gone correct you have made the right entry by writing the command mount space minus a there should be no error once you press enter so everything is fine the partition is done file system is installed mount or unmount if you want or you use this persistent mounting method so you might omit the mount or u mount commands you can simply use this editing of the fs tab file 
remember if in case you delete the partition you must delete the entry in this fs tab file also okay so the last step is how to delete the partition so this is the partition that exists all right so what we need to do is we need to again use f disk on the evsdc remember m okay now it says that the disk is currently in use repartition is probably a bad idea right it says it's recommended to unmount all the file systems okay so what we should do is so let's exit as of now since we did the entry in the fs tab file so the partition is mounted on the mount point so what we can do is we can use u mount and new partition okay now let's do f disk again so you can see now the error is not there m so now to delete a partition the key that is required is d you can see here delete a partition so press d enter since there was only one partition so it was pretty clear to the system that you want to delete that one otherwise it would ask you to tell it the partition number and then that partition will be deleted so w to update the partition table so you can see the partition table has been altered now let us check ls plk so you can see the entry stc1 is deleted there is only full disk which is of 3 gb so that's all about how to manage the partitions in the next video we are going to learn how to create swap space